that was the first day it flew me on a helicopter to the to go ice skating at the TWA thing. That was sweet when it just opened. It was sweet. Yeah. Well, sh I went to Panda Express for my first day. <laughs> <laughs> Virtual reality. Hi, I'm Danny. And I'm Caroline, a page six reporter in for Evan Real, who I'm so jealous stayed in Europe after being in Cannes with you, Danny, which I need to hear all about. I'm so beyond jealous. I know he did the right call because why did I, I don't know why I decided to go to Newark and not Lisbon, but um, he, I, I feel like I peaked though in Cannes that I knew any trip I would go on after would be like downhill because like I was five feet away from Rihanna and I don't really know where else I would experience something like that happening. Uh, it felt very magical. And I'm also obsessed too. I mean, I didn't have any time to talk to her because Rihanna, I don't know, Caroline, if you're surprised, has a big entourage of security guards. I'm shocked. Yeah, she she, she rolls out, she rolls a little deep with mm -hmm. Tiffany Haddish too. Um, but I would have loved to talk to her because she's a huge Bravo fan. Mm. Well, you did get to talk to Jen Fessler just a little bit. The Rihanna of my mind. So true. We, we're, we're Jen Fessler stan podcast <laughs> oh I, the, the way i would do anything for that woman and she almost because at can she was very excited that can had a lot of celebs there we kept on telling her no you're one of them girl go mingle and mix and she really wanted to meet will i am i don't think she got a chance to but who knows maybe maybe their paths will cross sometime soon but i hope rihanna is as excited for the new season of roni as we are because i I'm ready for it. I don't, are you? I'm so beyond excited. I know a lot of people were a little bit hesitant, a little nervous, maybe even a little anxious because, you know, I personally have loved Roni forever. The last 13 seasons, in my mind, have some of the best seasons in Housewives history. But after meeting just three of these women, my mind is like completely changed. I think they are all so individual, stunning, have so many like interesting stories and perspectives. And I just think, yeah, I, I really, I'm a fan, I'm a stan, and I'm excited to, you know, for everyone else to see what we're seeing. Yeah, I also love that you're like, everyone was like nervous, anxious, stressed. I'm like, that's just taking the subway. So it's really giving an authentic New York experience this upcoming season to people who might not be living in one of the boroughs. Like you're getting a little taste of it. And I feel it's kind of funny that they're entering, it's all these new ladies, but they're entering a show that everybody already has so many like, preconceived notions about and like so many like iconic moments and iconic people which is why I loved because Ramona told us about how she met them at Upfront and I loved that we got to hear their point of view about that. We talked to Ramona a little bit over a month ago and she said when she met you guys the first thing she did was like jump in the middle of everybody to take a photo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was meeting Ramona and the other ladies. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. That's exactly I, I what happened. What was that? Correct. <laughs> oh at Upfront. Oh at Upfront. She jumped yeah, right in the middle there. and then left. <laughs> yeah. Shit leave. No, it was like a photo bomber. It was like a photo bomber. Honestly, they were really, really they nice. Were looks they good were really too. nice. What? They all look great. They were really they, they were really nice. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> any specific <laughs> advice that any of them gave you that really stuck with you? Um, Sonia and I, we bonded over fashion. Um, you know, she's very flamboyant and, 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 and more is more. And I love that. So she was always like, don't be afraid to walk into a room and own it. And I think that was a great piece of advice. I got a funny tidbit from Jill Zarin. She said, don't ever film without glam. I was like, but what if I like wake up in the morning and <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, you yeah. know, like brushing my teeth. Yeah. She was like, doesn't matter get glam but also yeah. we're not the type of girls we're to not. sit in like in the middle of the day with I mean, full like eyeshadow and, and, and like it's new just, york we don't like get like, yeah all, you don't put on a pound of makeup that's also not coffee. it's not reality tv like if you're dolled up to the nines all the time like hello who has time yeah. watch us I all watch it scared. back and be yeah. like and <laughs> glam yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's I know. probably gonna happen <laughs> my bestie growing up was uh not growing up but in my 20s pandora vanderpump so Lisa is, um, yeah, Lisa gave some good advice. She was like, just be, your, just be yourself, doll. You know, <laughs> she's like, that's a good one that is a very yeah, good, yeah. it is. It's like just, but truly though, be yourself. And then, so that's why I think so much, you know, Lisa, she's always making her innuendos and whatnot. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna talk about You know, like, <laughs> couple jokes. I went out to dinner with Meredith actually and her kids, Aww. yeah, from Salt Lake City. She is awesome. She's, she's very, very cool. Yeah. Like we had, we were sitting at, at Zero Bond and we had these like, 
professional hockey player send us bottles of wine and then want to hang out. She's gorgeous. She's like beautiful. Yeah. And so so is her daughter. So many of the house in general are like people that are beautiful. Yeah. Really beautiful. And, yeah, like really beautiful. Beautiful. And she was great. She's just like nice to have someone you could text and like ask questions to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dolores reached out to me. Um, yeah. She she was great. She was you know very very um, supportive and and if I ever needed anything, she gave me her cell phone. So I got you, girl. I'm gonna text you. Oh my gosh, obsessed because Ramona had our at your live show, you know, was just kind of saying, well, I, I mean, I had to get the photo op. If there's one thing I got to do, it's get the photo op. So she, you know, at the upfronts, when they announced the legacy Real House of Ultimate Girls trip, Roni legacy cast, Ramona took it upon herself to, you know, jump into the new cast photo, which great, tra great media training on her end, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's also one of those, is, is there anything more Ramona than that? I mean, she has 500 girlfriends, now at this cast. She's like, you know what, this new photo, they need me in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they all did. And I mean, they of course loved her and also uh, got some tips for Jill Z uh got some tips from Jill Zarin about, and I love the Jill, really true Jill. She's like, you're gonna wanna get glam. <laughs> <laughs> that killed me because my first thought was looking back on these early seasons of not only Roni but other housewives shows when you really just did see them you know glam wasn't a thing back then and Ooh. obviously that's been a huge debate do or don't and I love that Jill was like you know what let's be realistic you're gonna look back and you're not gonna love the scenes with no glam versus glam and that's just the honesty we need to hear and what I expect and love about Miss Miss Aaron I uh love her so much and her fabrics I can't I'm gonna wait for the first new Roni girl that's gonna get a rug and I do know like she's gonna be like, like where should I put like Jill's gonna take over the entire apartment I cannot wait for that but speaking of glam that you were saying I love that these Roni girlies already have like been mixing and like hanging out with some of the glam ladies that we love like a Pandora from Vanderpump Rules crazy there I remember I was seeing I'm so glad it surfaced I don't know how these Bravo fans do it but they really do find everything I mean I remember I saw this photo going around of Bryn Pandora and LVP and my immediate thought was okay I need to know everything and I immediately need to be invited to this next brunch that they have oh please <laughs> and I like just to catch up with Pandora too but also Bryn seemed like such a fun time mm -hmm. I would love it actually everybody had a, amazing places I would love for us to crash because Erin is like hanging out with Meredith Marks, like the ice queen. And I, I see them as a good duo. I actually see them as a pairing. Mm -hmm. And it was so funny because she was saying how they went out and these guys got them bottles, you know, treated them, all these things. And she was like, well, Meredith's so stunning. And I was thinking, yes, yeah, she is stunning, gorgeous queen. We love her. But at the same time, I was like, Erin, you're sleeping on yourself a little bit. You are... A stunning Tribeca queen of New York. Don't worry. She's awake to herself because I don't know if you caught when she was in the studio, someone told her, do you ever get told that you look like Jennifer Aniston? And she was like three times a day. Same. Oh, okay. I'm like self-aware. And she does love the show Friends. So I'm glad that she, I wonder if she loves Friends because Friends is Friends or because she gets told she looks like Jennifer Aniston. Either okay. way, I'm obsessed. I love it. And I thought it was so funny too when Jessel said that, you know, she's connected a lot with Dolores from Jersey because they gave me such same vibes. I don't know what it was, just a little bit of like a maternal, motherly and Mama Bear. Yeah. I loved it. And I and like literally she I don't think there is any person in the Bravo sphere that you would want to be on your side more than Dolores Catania. Like she's gonna look out for it now that she has her eyes on Jessel. She's going to look out for that girl to the end of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd say between Jill Zarin, Dolores Catania, and Meredith Marks, those three are good to go for a while. I think they're all set. And who knows? I mean, but that's a lot of cross-franchise um, connections, which is sometimes a beautiful thing. But sometimes the water doesn't mix, like uh, for Jersey and OC, with Tamara and Teresa that are like still going at it strong. Who is the most overrated housewife of all time? Teresa. Wow. It is crazy. I will tell you, I remember first hearing about this feud maybe in late April. And my first opinion and my first question, first thought, I was like, where in the world did this come from? I mean, I know there's some history between them. But for me, I'm like, these they're two icon, iconic Bravo people. Where is this coming from? 
I mean, it's it, have you, you that proves to me that you never watched the VH1 Divas when Aretha Franklin and Celine Dion were right next to each other trying to sing. Icons don't like to be next to icons. They so, like to be no. the icon. And I do know Teresa, I think, tried to start a little drama with Brandy Glanville because Brandy's friends with Tamara. And then when uh, Tamara had Caroline Manzo on her podcast, Teresa's like, well, that's not what our girlfriend does. So it all spiraled from there. Tamara's a Virgo. She knows there's balance. So I think she needs to do an eye for an eye. Teresa, like myself, is a Taurus. Sometimes we bull bulldoze in. So it's not a lot of chillness around. But the latest shade came uh, from a networking programmatics point of view when Tamara told uh, her uh, Trace Amigos live show viewers that uh, Teresa had a wedding special, but so did I. And mine was three parts. Well, there you go. That drop the mic. That's all you need. But in but honestly, I think that's why OC needed Tamara back so badly. Mm -hmm. Is she is not afraid to speak her mind. She's not afraid to throw these little jabs, no matter how petty they mm -hmm. might be. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I couldn't help but wonder why was Teresa's wedding only one episode? I mean, when we were talking special, I was looking back to Tamara's 2013 special 10 years ago. You know, that was yeah. iconic. I feel a lot of housewife specials usually I wonder, I wonder if they were like it's one part but the hair is three parts so that oh true how it evens out and I also do think Bravo probably knew if we delayed this reunion for two more weeks I would have rioted so maybe they just had to yes I totally forgot that it was before the reunion that was that was an urgent matter some would say that was the top of the news cycle that we those that month. Oh, it was, it was everywhere. We needed it. Just like we, I don't know if we needed this, but I'm glad <laughs> that uh, she's talking about it. Emily Simpson has had quite a weekend into a week in regards to Ozempic because everybody was talking about like, oh, she's on it. And then she was like, oh, no, I'm not. I've never. And then she was on Jeff Lewis. I was like, okay, well I did. I knew that I had gained weight. Um, I didn't like the way I looked. So I went to the doctor, I did a full blood panel. I was, I had, my cholesterol was high. I have zero testosterone. I was pre-diabetic. So, sorry. Um, she actually said, why don't you do a semaglutide, which mm -hmm. is Ozempic. So I did, I did that in December. For I one month? For one month. And you know, I, that was a great kickstart for me. Yeah. I mean, I feel like anyone can go on Jeff Lewis and he will get you to spill like his, your deepest, darkest secrets. Like beware. <laughs> he really, there's something, I don't know what he pumps into that studio, but it gets everybody going. And I mean, I love that it, that is the side effect of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I mean, it is interesting with Emily because she initially, like you said, she kind of clapped back and was like, well, like I've, you know, been eating healthy, been working out, which is what, you know, a lot of women say in addition to, or maybe instead of the Ozempic mm -hmm. use, but she said she used it for a month in December. And then it made her a little too tired, especially, you know, a mom of three kids is craziness. Um, and then she got liposuction in her arms, which just really like toned them, showed all like the, the bulk in them, I guess. So I don't know. It sounded like pretty rave reviews to me, but she looks great too. And I'm like, Amazing. you know, Amazing. and that's the thing where I was like, I feel like some people don't want to do the procedure process of it all, but she was like, you know what? I got it. I'm flaunting it. And she's living her best life. Yeah. And I really do like give like props to people that will, that will at least admit using it or, you know, explain the rationale for why they do it. Cause the amount of times that someone comes in and then it, they end up looking like the Megan doll and they're like, no, I just switched to quinoa. I'm like, no, I'm like, what is, you are a new body. Like, can we talk about it? Can we celebrate it? Mm -hmm. um, and can you be a queen? Like we want you to be mm -hmm. and like all the dancing queens are. Ooh, I love the transition. And all the dancing queen fans, unfortunately have to transition to new programming because it's season is over. And that doesn't mean the shade is done because we talked to Donnie a little bit asking about like, has she always dreamed of being a reality star? Because there's Sabrina on the show who said she manifested being a reality TV star. Donnie kind of hit her with the fact that she's not a star. And uh, that Donnie's really looking to kind of be on the way we call broad. So check that out. <laughs> and I know when we talked to Sabrina, your co-star, she kind of felt like she was like manifesting this reality TV moment. Do you feel like you also were laying the foundation or like the reality show kind of, you were just like, should I do this? Do I want to do this? Let me do Like, what was your thought process in signing no. on for it? 
it, I mean, that had never even entered my head, like to be in a reality show. No, yes, Sabrina's like ultimate dream in life is like to be famous, which newsflash, none of us are gonna be famous. Like you're gonna be like a D-list recognizable person to a subset of a small population of people. Um, but like, I mean, my dream was like to be like a backup dancer or to be on Broadway. So like, that's my dream, not um, to be a reality star. But if I can uh, get there this way, I'm open to it.